You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey everyone, welcome to another awesome episode of Ask Drone You. My name is Paul. And my name is Rob, and this is episode number 507. Hope you guys are having a fantastic week. We are grateful that you're spending a few minutes of your day with us. We do, and we are so happy you're learning. If you found this podcast, this show valuable, informative, it's helped you fly, please share it with someone. Please uh, let someone else know. It really helps us out. And as the community grows, if you're thinking about turning your passion into profit, there's no better place to take your business off the ground than with DroneU. So make sure you check out thedroneu.com. But we've got a good question today. Go ahead and play that question, Rob. Hey, Rob. Hey, Paul. My question is this. Has a hobbyist drone pilot ever been fined by the FAA? I heard that the FAA will hand out fines, but I never heard of one being handed out. What gives? It is interesting because there is a lot of fear, Paul, about getting fined by the FAA, and some of those fines can be pretty hefty, but even Let that... Let me ask you a question. Please. Is the fear a good thing or a bad thing? With all the new people coming out and doing these things that we keep hearing about, is it a good thing or is it a bad thing? Well, let's talk about what fines are for. They are to be a deterrent for future actions, because, right? Because, yes, so, in crime, we can only take one of two things away, your money or your freedom. Yeah. So in this case, they are taking our money. The law does not allow them to take our time, at least not that I know of or not yet. <laughs> Has to be pretty significant, I'm pretty sure, for I'm, them to yeah, take that. Yeah, absolutely. So anyway, and you'd have to go through a whole court system, et cetera, et cetera, whereas in this case, they can just give you a fine. And yeah, I think that that fear is a healthy thing. I think it is. And as I had learned, the answer to this question, I thought was no, no hobbyist has really ever been fined. I mean, uh, Raphael Perker at the time was fined for reckless flying, but that's because they couldn't get him on commercial flying. Well, we know the big case in New York. Which case? Skypan? Skypan, mm -hmm. right? So that was obviously a big fine. Yeah, but they weren't really hobbyists. They claimed they were hobbyists and that, you know... That the 333 was invalid, which we, we ag agreed with them on that. So, um, to clarify, we're talking specifically about um, hobbyists then. We are talking specifically about hobbyists. But to take a quick second, take a quick break, because I have a story for you. You know, when I, I think about telling this story, like the song, like, do, 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 <laughs> do, do, do. That's kind of like what I think of because okay. when I think of this guy walking up, right? Imagine a heavy set dude been working for the government his whole life, has lots of ambition, <laughs> <laughs> full of wonderment. Oh gosh! Gun on the side of his hip, Ooh. wearing an FAA badge. Okay. And when we come back, I'm gonna tell you the rest of the story. But quick second, want to say thank you to our sponsors, Videoblocks.com, because they love interrupting podcasts. Just kidding. They don't love interrupting anything media. They actually like adding to your media, making it look a little bit better and more look complete. So if you're like me and you produce videos or you produce podcasts and you ever need some waveforms, some clips something that's copyright free. Mm -hmm. There are hundreds of thousands of choices from this website called videoblocks.com. They also own a website called audioblocks.com. Yep. And because you're a listener of Ask Drone You, you can check out both of them for free, seven day free trial if you go to videoblocks.com forward slash drone. But on that bombshell, let's get back to the show. All right, we're back. We didn't really go anywhere. <laughs> it's pretty awesome, huh? <laughs> I want to hear this story because it was I was really sort of getting engaged and very very curious about this heavy set gentleman with a gun. All right, so let's let's and take it back. Let's let's take it back. This happened in in the exact location wasn't given to me, but I, but it was between um, South Eastern New Mexico and West Texas. Okay. Uh, okay. In that air, in that region. Gotcha. So let me put the picture in your head, right? Dry, mm -hmm. arid, uh, you know, really, really dry, low lens. You drive through the area, you get a nice smell in the air. Cow poo. <laughs> <laughs> or ol. You know, I actually love driving through country, at least not in Texas, but everywhere else I love driving through the country. Um, Good. Just Why because, not Texas? Because there are still some very redneck 
Okay, mm. I should I should stop asking him questions yeah. like that. Really. So anyway, okay, story. I actually like most rednecks. That's the funny thing. Um. Anyway, but when they're police like officers me. and ignorant, it's another story. But anyway, um, let's get back to this. So, I'll take you back. The mm, winds are slowly change. blowing over the sand. Tre- treeless. <laughs> do, 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 do. <laughs> do, do, do. And there's a guy what? who has an FAA badge. Mm-hmm. And he is one of the few guys in the FAA who's actually allowed to carry a gun. Why is he carrying a gun? I didn't get that, an- that question answered okay. at the FAA yesterday. All right. But it, it w- that's a v- very good question. Okay. Um, and I and I actually like even joked at the FAA and I was like, well, I could see if he was busting a drug dealer, and it kind of made me think of um, that movie that you hate or that our audience hates me quoting, Super mm-hmm. Troopers. Yeah, you know, the meow jokes. Yeah. Oh boy. Here, <laughs> here we go. Well, I actually was thinking that maybe it's because it's sort of near the border. And that's fair enough so because maybe. you know everyone's like, oh, people who run drugs across the border, like they're not dangerous. Oh, whatever. <laughs> You'd like to think that. I mean, if I ran across them, I'd be like, hi, leave me alone. <laughs> yeah. Just fly my drone. <laughs> yeah. But um, All right. but anyway, so he has, a, he has a valid reason to hold a gun, but there was this hobbyist drone pilot. He was really, really excited, Rob. He had just gotten his new Phantom 4. Nice. Nice drone, huh? Yeah, good for e- him. Even though DJI has now stopped producing them and the parts. But anyway, nice drone. Hmm. He thought it would be a really good idea to get a shot of some infrastructure, a bridge. Okay. I'm making this all up. He wanted to get a shot of an airport. Oh. Yeah. Not a good idea. No. (laughs) Okay. So this guy decides, I'm going to go get a shot of this airport. Was it a big airport? Little airport? Maybe it doesn't doesn't matter? A big one? It's a big one. Oh, wow. Okay. uh, I I think it was class Delta. Okay. And, um... Which should resonate with a lot of people because there are so many Class D airports all over the country. Yeah. So he went out and he, he took his drone off and he was just far enough out that the geofence wouldn't kick on from DJI. Okay. So he takes off his drone, flies it around, flies around for 15, 20 minutes. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden this guy pulls up, right? Yeah. Black SUV. Ooh. Federal plates. Scary. It starts with a G62. Okay. Not not excited. He's a little nervous, but unaware of the drone laws, he lands his drone, slowly puts it away, and this guy walks up. Because he's wearing cowboy boots. Boots, yeah. Which only guys who carry guns do. I'm kidding. I, no spurs, though. That's not true. I'm going to imagine there's spurs. Okay. It's my story, Rob. <laughs> that, hey, okay. I'm rolling with it. <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know why he's wearing spurs in a suburban. He's but. not wearing spurs. Oh, okay. I good. was just adding that in there. Okay. Don't fact check that, Ilker. Um, <laughs> Step away from the Google. So he walks up to this guy. Everyone's probably like, tell the damn story already. Walks up to this guy and uh, he asks him, sir, is your aircraft registered? <laughs> picks up the drone, pulls out the battery, looks through the tray. Because he knows that a lot of the hobbyists put their numbers on the battery so it's difficult for other people to find. But I actually found out it takes FISDO about 10 days to pull anyone's address who's a hobbyist. It's very hard Hmm. to get their information, even though it's publicly available online. So... The pilot says... So the pilot says, well, no. What is registration? I didn't know I needed to register my drone. Hmm. Right? We've talked about this. The Part 48, John Rupert, the whole thing. And he says, well, you know you're flying in restricted airspace, right? You can't fly here. You're not authorized to fly here. He was like, well, um, why? Well, son, there's an airport right there. <laughs> there are other aircraft that need this space. Mm-hmm. You're supposed to yield to manned aircraft as a hobbyist or as a commercial pilot. Mm-hmm. That's in your community set of guidelines. Well, sir, what are you doing? Well, I, I, I'm taking pictures for the newspaper. Oof. Well, I'm sure the newspaper are, appreciated that. Are you being paid by the newspaper? Well, no, I'm not. Well, do you own a business around drones? Mm, no. 
what do you do, sir? Well, I'm a commercial real estate agent, and I've got some listings kind of over there by the airport. Hmm. Well, were you planning on posting these pictures in a public forum? Well, yeah. Uh oh. Well, then, sir, that's furthering your business. And here at the FAA, we don't define commercial actions as money crossing hands. We define it as whether or not it furthers your business. Hmm. This man, which hmm. I found out this week after my meeting with the FAA, um, was charged $20,000 as a hobbyist. $20,000. So was that one fine or was that a several fines grouped together? Where, where'd that number come from? Um, I asked that question mm -hmm. and cause you know, I, I said the same thing and he's like, well, yeah, they can totally be grouped together. But in this particular instance, I don't, I don't remember. And I asked him, I said, well, so did you get the guy for commercial activity? He's like, nope. He's like, cause that would have been $1,100. He only flew one battery and he did it in restricted airspace. So that would have been like maybe 2,200 bucks right there. He's like, but he flew an unregistered aircraft and that's a $20,000 fine. Dang. And this guy was fined $20,000. That's, uh, so I'm sure he's going to fight it. Mm -hmm. Now, I want to say something. I totally made up the part about him being a commercial broker. Um, I really wanted to put the point of furthering your business because this is something that the FAA talked to me about. Um, the guy did not own a commercial uh, enterprise whatsoever. He was literally just a hobbyist going out there flying by the airport. But what was interesting to me is that they didn't get him for flying commercially. Mm -hmm. They didn't get him for restricted airspace. They got him for registration. And I asked him, well, you know, is that normal? And the FAA guy says to me, no, normally if someone's not registered, we normally just have them pull up their phone and register their drone. But this guy was in restricted airspace. This guy hmm. could have been potentially furthering his business, but he had an unregistered aircraft. And that's a big deal to us. But it seems like, if I'm understanding the story correctly in terms of the emphasis that you're making, the emphasis, it's that he was in restricted airspace, which was dangerous. I mean, it became a safety issue. And that's how the FAA saw it. And right. that's the thing I want to put across. It doesn't matter who the guy is. It doesn't matter what job he has. If he is furthering his business or a safety hazard, not in the eyes of you, but in the eyes of the FAA, mm -hmm. they could totally come after you. Now, a lot of people are going to be like, well, Paul, let's be honest. The FAA doesn't have the resources to come after people. They don't. I mean, they, they even told me, like, if, if you know, because I told them about the guy we saw in Tramway. This guy's sitting in his car, literally sitting in his car, flying an Inspire 1 next to a highway while parked on the highway. Um, and I went up to his car and I said very nicely, like, you know that your car is charged and that you're going to interfere the signal. Oh, yeah, well, I've been noticing that. I'm like, get, get out of the car. <laughs> I've been noticing that, wondering what's going on. Anyway, and the F I told the FAA guy that story, and he's like, you know what? That's a perfect example of at least 10 laws that are being broken. But he goes, Paul, at the end of the day, I care about safety. And right. someone can tell me all day long they're flying as a hobbyist or a commercial person, but it's about safety. Can I get out there to that guy that you just told me about on tramway? No. And it's never going to happen. So even this case that you're talking about, that was happenstance. It was happenstance, yes. But it could happen to you. It could, but here's one thing I realized. And he goes, you know, if it's a big enough snuff, it's a big enough issue, it gets public attention. Someone posts some footage on the news, like that guy in Nashville. That's why I brought that up. We're going to go after that guy. And we're going to make a point that people know that we are going to enforce the rules. I really wonder, speaking of that case, if they will go after that guy. Because that was insane. I don't know yeah. if you guys listening have seen this video, but it's... Well, let's take this all to the next level, right? What about Casey Neistat? I'm going to ask that question. Right? Yeah. You know, we know he's lost multiple Mavics. We've seen him fly in restricted airspace all the time. He's the absolute worst example in the world for kids and drones. Um, and I asked him very nicely. I was like, Have you, are you guys looking into this? Like, is this something going on right now? Mm -hmm. Because people want to know, you know, and he gets free drones all the time because of his falling, which makes sense. It's exposure. Sure. But at what point do we say we're actually going to follow the rules. If they're going to make the rules, you know, and that's why too, a lot of people in the drone community were like, Hey, why didn't Paul talk about what, um, the administrator of the FAA Huerta said at CES that they're going to get rid of VLOS and they're going to get rid of flying over people and they're going to get rid of this. And we're just going to be able to fly everywhere. I mean, guys, if you remember PR releases from back in the day, 
what they say and what they do are very different. Well, in those kinds of things, I'd be shocked if they did those things. I don't think this is going to happen, which I didn't. That's why I was like, I'm not even going to report on this. Right. Yeah. This is just trying to just trying to get attention. Yeah. So, um, but anyway, you know, the, the, going back to the enforcement, can are they really able to enforce? No. If you cause a big enough stink, they will. They will come after you, and they and they're going to make a point. You know, a lot of these FISDO guys, they are airplane guys. They are manned aircraft, and they, you know, they really have a fixing towards that. I mean, even the way, when I mentioned privacy and whatnot to this FAA guy, even the way that he thought about it, you could tell, like, this guy thinks about airspace as an airplane pilot. And here's the example. I was telling him about the U.S. Cosby case, right, and that homeowners do have a legitimate right to the airspace above their property. And he said, no, they don't. From the ground up, that's air is the national airspace system. And the FAA owns that. And all the way, literally, to the ground. That's what he's saying. When there is a federal Hmm. published case in the registry that Hmm. says the opposite. Interesting. And that fascinates me. There's a gap that needs to be bridged there somehow. I think it goes to show that there's a level of nuanced slang and jargon when industries grow up. Yeah. And it's not always true. And we're seeing that rampantly with the, the drone industry. Yeah, and ultimately it, it doesn't get worked out until there's case law yep. to figure it out and to have it codified. Yep. And we're a ways off from that. So it's Well, I don't know. I mean, you know, David Boggs, who's a member, had his drone shot out of the sky in Kentucky. That was, yeah, nas- that was national news. True. That's one, one know, case that is being worked on. The, the federal registration thing. Mm-hmm what John Rupert was working on. In fact, it would be nice to have an update on that. Seems like nothing's ever going to happen. Yeah. So, but anyway, Absolutely. we'll see. Well, interesting. I, I guess the, I don't know, the, the, the bottom line is fly safe. They actually are giving out fines if they happen to yeah, catch the, you. The point of this story and a lot of the details, by the way, were embellished. Um, the guy was a hobbyist. Uh, he, it's questionable whether he was furthering his business. Um, but the fact of the matter is, is that they are doing enforcements. Um, if you're in the wrong place at the wrong time, it could happen to you. Mm -hmm. Um, you have to be smart, but the whole idea here is not to scare people. It's that guys, and I know a lot of, you know, this, but you have to spread this knowledge to other people. It's that guys, our actions have an effect on the future as a whole. Absolutely. So anyway, just think about that. We love to fly, and that's why we talk about these things. They're not fun things to talk about, and you can definitely get in an argument with people. But at the end of the day, as, as long as people say, like, hey, why are we here, guys? Because this is fun. We love to fly, and we want to keep flying. And stupid people are going to take that right away, just like we saw here at our own drone park by the studio yeah. that had signs put up by the local government that you couldn't fly here that were later taken down. Mm-hmm. Because if we don't represent this industry, who is? Who's going to? Because all the people who have done it already have done a really, really terrible job. Yeah. Thanks for your vote of confidence, Rob. (laughs) On that bombshell, (laughs) that's going to do it for us today. My name is Paul. I'm Rob. This is Ask Drone You. Again, thanks for the share and the review. Bye.